Right here is Victor Wembanyama not receiving the ball. Here he is again, and here he is again, to the point where even the opposition commentators were shocked. Ooh, they missed a lot yeah. of Wemby. They're looking for Wembanyama on the cut. They cut off Sohan, misses back. Yeah, oh, Brandon missed him too. I don't know how you miss a 7-4 guy. Yeah, how do you? Exactly. I, I just not don't see understand that. Well, if there were problems last year with Wemby not receiving the ball, then the Spurs just made the absolute best move possible. More breaking news. Chris Paul is speed walking to the Riverwalk, who was cut earlier tonight by the Warriors and intends to sign a one-year deal with the San Antonio Spurs. Now, Chris Paul is 39 years old. 39, which in pro athlete terms is like 105 years old, but I don't care if the Spurs have to wheel him onto the court. He is still great at one thing. Thing, and that is dropping dimes. Wow. Draymond Green running the floor. Perfect pass from Chris Paul. Fine from Chris Paul. So when you pair one of the greatest passes in NBA history with soon to be one of the greatest players and lob threats in NBA history, it doesn't matter how old he is, something good is going to come of it. And I can guarantee you, we will not be seeing nearly as many clips of Wemby not receiving the ball from his teammates. If you had like a peer point, say you had like a CP, like those guys that just know basketball and know that, Wemby, go right there, I'm gonna throw this shit as high as I can. Go catch and dunk it. And just for anyone thinking Chris Paul is completely washed, because it would be easy to have that opinion, last year for the Warriors, he averaged nine points and seven assists. Not crazy numbers, but the key detail from this stat line is 1.3 turnovers. And over the last three years, CP3 has averaged just shy of nine assists to less than two turnovers per game. Just to put this into perspective, in that time, he's one of nine players to average seven to and a half assists or more, and he is by far the least turnover prone of any of those top playmakers. He's now joining a team who had the fourth most turnovers in the NBA last season. And look, I showed you the clips of Wemby being in position to score and not getting the ball, which happened far too often last year, but I don't believe it was because guys like Jeremy Sohan despise him. The real reason was because they had no one with point guard experience outside of Trey Jones on the roster, and the numbers showed there was such a clear discrepancy when they actually put a point guard next to Wemby, because in 1300 minutes, with Trey and Vic on the floor, they had a plus 5 net rating, which is a very, very good team, and that's a pretty large sample size. With Trey off the floor and just Wemby, it was a negative 15. Again, take these numbers with a grain of salt, but anyone with two eyes, heck, you didn't even have to have two eyes to recognize that when Wemby was paired with a player who could get him the ball in advantageous positions, the Spurs were a much better team as a result. Now you're bringing in someone who can do all of what Trey Jones can do and more. No disrespect to Trey. And he's not only still capable of setting up Wemby for post-ups, for lobs, in transition, you name it. But even if CP3 were to not play a single minute for the Spurs this season, he would still provide value to every single player on that roster. Take their newest draftee, Stefan Castle, for example, who has all the physical tools and intangibles to be a great player. Castle's been quiet after a double ah! But as far as being an NBA level point guard or ball handler, there's still a lot of room for growth. Luckily, you get someone who knows about that more than almost anyone in NBA history. And I think back to the last young guard CP3 took under his wing, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who has praised Chris Ball for helping him develop into the superstar he currently is. Now, take a guess who Stefan Castle models his game after. Who would you say that you model your game after mostly? in the NBA. Probably guys like Shea. This doesn't have to be specific to just Wemby and Castle either. There's a fundamental understanding of the game and an ability to communicate on the court, which CP3 will be instilling in every single player on the Spurs roster. But getting back to the on-court fit, he is absolutely still capable of setting the table for the Spurs superstar. I mean, how many other guys are coming off screens like this 
hitting an in and out crossover and then just throwing the underhand lob to Trace Jackson Davis. Well here, as Trace sets the screen, CP3 draws Jericho Sims away and it's clockwork. Or how about this time, where two defenders get caught on CP3 and that's just a ridiculous pass. That's the definition of threading the needle. He's still always in complete control of the defense in pick and roll situations. Like here where he gets the screen and with Lively initially hedging, he takes that extra dribble, forcing Lively to commit before the wraparound pass to Trace. Another action that the Warriors loved running last year was having Trey look as though he was going to set the pin down for Clay before slipping and Paul finding him every single time. I could see the Spurs trying something similar involving Vassell and Wemby. Not only so Wemby can slip and catch lobs, but if Wemby sets the screen and two bodies go to Vassell, he can then drop the pass to Vic. Or if the big stays in drop coverage, it could open up Vassell for some wide open looks. And after watching those clips, tell me how many other players in the league can consistently do that. Outside of all-star level guards, there's just no one in the league that would be a better fit to set up Wemby than CP3. And it's actually a disservice to Chris Paul to only mention how much he's going to help Vic. Because if you know how to cut or shoot or any of the above, Chris Paul will put you in a position to score. Just look at him on this play, where he runs a pick and roll with Trace Jackson Davis. He spots Brown sliding over to tag the roller, so he immediately skips the pass to a wide open Moody for three. Clearly the biggest drop off for Chris Paul has been his athleticism and his scoring, but even still as a scorer, watching him closely last year, he was consistently getting to his spots in the mid range. It felt like he left two to three points on the table nightly from missing shots that we've seen him make for years. And maybe that's a result of father time, but I just wouldn't be shocked if we saw a little boost in points as well as assists. And I know it was five years ago now, but this feels eerily similar to when CP3 was traded to the OKC Thunder, a team with no expectations and with most people considering him washed only for them to make the playoffs and for him to rediscover his best form. Now don't expect all NBA Chris Paul, but I could easily see a 15 to 20% boost from last year just based off the fact he's going to be playing with a top 10 player in the league as his pick and roll partner. Yes, I just said top 10 NBA player, because over the last 43 games of the season, do you want to take a look at what Vic was able to average per 36 minutes? Then compare those numbers to the last three MVP winners. It's hard to fathom how dominant he could be with another season under his belt and even an old version of Chris Paul next to him. Because who else in NBA history is making plays like this, where Trey Jones just throws it up to him with him running backwards and he guides it in. Look at the Raptors bench. Yes, we all have the same reaction watching Vic. Or how about this time where Collins gets the ball at the free throw line and even with a lengthy defender fronting him, you just have to throw it up there and he will do the rest of the work. Chris Paul is probably watching these highlights in his bedroom at 3 a.m. and his wife is probably wondering why he's so aroused. Well, it's because of Victor Wemba and Yama. Now, if you did make it all the way to the end of the video and want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. It's free. Dropping a like on the video would be much appreciated. Have a great day. Bye.